We are going to read The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. There they are, Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. Now, my dear, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there and he was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Uh-oh. Do you think that the bunnies are going to be good listeners and do what their mommy said? I hope so. Now run along and don't get into any mischief. I am going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. There she goes, off into the wood. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. And that is just what their mom had said to do. But what do you think Peter's going to do? Well, that looks like fun. Plucking their little blackberries. What good bunnies they were. Uh-oh. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. Uh-oh, there he is, being a very naughty bunny. First, he ate some lettuces and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. Uh-oh, he's got a tummy ache. Looks like he's got a tummy ache. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop! Thief! Oh dear, look at him go. He's coming after Peter. I wonder if he'll get away. Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. Uh oh, there's Peter's little shoes. There's Peter's shoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons in his jacket. On his jacket, it was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Oh dear, he's going to be in trouble. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Oh dear, he was going to give up, but the sparrows came and they said, You can do it, Peter, you can do it. Come on, try to get out. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind. Oh, there he goes. Oh, he just got away. Phew, that was scary. 
and rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Oops. So he jumped into the can to hide, but it was full of water. Oh, dear. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Oh, you Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. There's Mr. McGregor. He's looking for Peter under the flower pots, but there's Peter with his little ears sticking out of the watering can. And then he sneezed and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go, although he was very damp with sitting in that can. Oh, also he was very damp with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity, lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. Oh, he's lost the poor bunny. I guess he should have listened to his mother. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Oh, look at poor Peter with his big tears. He's got big tears on his face now. Aww. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, Little Benjamin Bunny. There's the cat. Looking at the goldfish. He went back toward the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scratch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned toward Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Oh, there's the gate. Do you see it? It's way back there. Peter got down very quietly off of the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter didn't care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Phew, he finally got away. Well, here comes Mr. McGregor after him again. My goodness. He does not like bunny rabbits. We don't like bunny rabbits either. They eat all of our food in our garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. It doesn't look like it's working very well. The blackbirds seem not to be scared of that. Peter never stopped running or looking behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered 
what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. Oh dear, he's not very responsible with his clothes. There he is, he's so tired. And there's Mama cooking. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made him some chamomile tea, and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. There he is in bed, and she's making him some tea. Isn't that the cutest little tea kettle that you ever saw? But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. Yum, yum. The end. Now remember, Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail were good little bunnies and they listened to their mommy and that is why they got to have a treat. But Peter, he was a naughty bunny rabbit, did not listen to his mommy. So he had a very rough time at Mr. McGregor's garden and then got sick. The poor fellow. I hope he learned his lesson and I hope that you enjoyed this story.